All right, so first thing I want to talk about. So we're, these tests that we're doing are submaximal tests, right? And so submaximal means, uh, you know, we, we definitely don't go above 85% of maximal heart rate, right? Now, one of the things that we're obviously calculating here is we're calculating oxygen consumption. And so how do we do that without actually measuring oxygen consumption? And so uh, with these tests, there are, are four assumptions that we make, all right? So, and this is, I don't know, it's in, this is in your book, but I don't, I don't know what page. Um, there are four assumptions that we make. You need to know these assumptions, all right? Because this is what allows us to estimate oxygen consumption without actually measuring oxygen consumption. So the only measurement that we're going to take during this, during these tests is heart rate. And so the first uh, assumption that we talk about is uh, th that you have to reach steady state during each of these stages. During every test that we do, they're multi, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're not all multi-stage, but the majority of them are multi-stage tests. The two today are actually single stage. But what we're looking at is, is we're, we want to make sure that you reach steady state during each stage of the test that we administer. So the first assumption, watch out for that poll. Uh, the first assumption is that you reach steady state. Now, what is steady state? When we say steady state, what do I mean? All right, so it's, it's going to be constant, all right? So with heart rate, with oxygen consumption, remember from exercise physiology, we see initially those variables will increase, but then they'll plateau. And so typically it takes for most people, depending on the intensity, uh, depending on training state, steady state takes about one to four minutes, all right? And so with these tests that we do, most of the stages are anywhere from three to four minutes. And they, they're designed to allow you to reach steady state during that stage. Right. Um, when we do the cycling test, we're not doing it today, but when we do the cycling test, it is multi-stage. And so we one of the things that we have to do is we have to make sure that you're at steady state. And so the way that we figure that out, so to increase from, say, stage one to stage two, to increase the workload, we look at the differences in the heart rate that we measure during that stage. So, for example, uh, in the cycling test, again, which we're not going to do today, but in the cycling test, we take heart rate every minute. So it's a three-minute stage, and we take heart rate at minute one, minute two, and minute three. Right? We look at the differences in the two heart rates at minutes two and three. And if there is less than a six beat per minute difference, we consider that steady state. So steady state is defined as plus or minus five beats per minute, right, or less. Does that make sense? So at minute two, my heart rate was 110 beats per minute. At minute three, my heart rate was 112 beats per minute. We consider that steady state, and so we would then increase the workload and go to the next stage. Now, if at minute two, my heart rate was 110 beats per minute, and then at minute three, my heart rate was 118 beats per minute. I'm not at steady state, and so what we'll talk about during this, during that test, what we do is we actually extend it out one more minute. So we go to a fourth minute to try and make sure that the individual reaches steady state, all right? So assumption number one, you reach steady state during each stage, all right? Assumption number two, is that with cycling and with treadmill walking and running, we are all equally mechanically efficient. All right. So it assumes that we all expend approximately the same amount of energy right, at a given workload on a modality. Now we know that that's not true because training can affect efficiency um, and, and so that's assumption number two, all right? Assumption number three is we estimate maximum heart rate. And so on a, as we calculate these things, I'm gonna show you why that's important. But we estimate maximum heart rate 
And that estimated maximum heart rate is based on age. So you guys have probably all used the formula 220 minus age, right? So what it assumes is that every, um, every individual of, a, of the same age has approximately the same heart rate. So that's, again, that's not always the case. So for example, I'm 38, my estimated max heart rate is, would be 182. My actual maximum heart rate is around 190 beats per minute. All right, so it's a little bit higher. Now what that does is when we actually calculate it, it creates error and stuff in these, in these calculations. All right, so equally efficient, steady state, same maximum heart rate, and then the fourth assumption, and this is probably the most important for us because this is what allows us to estimate oxygen consumption from heart rate, is that between 110 beats per minute and 150 beats per minute, there is a linear relationship between heart rate and VO2. So I'm going to say that again. Between 110 and 150 beats per minute, there is a linear relationship between heart rate and oxygen consumption. Now, for the, the two tests that we do today, there are already equations that are formulated. We don't really take these things into consideration. All right. So what we just talked about, while they're part of the assumptions that are made with these tests, um, we don't really see them in how we calculate today. All right. But when we do future tests, it's going to be important for us to, to remember those things and in, in when we calculate. All right. But you do need to know what those four assumptions are. All right. Those will be on test. Do right. you have any, any questions on those? So when we make these assumptions, if you, if you go through and you look at every test that's in your textbook, it'll tell you the percent error associated with that. Anytime we're estimating, obviously there's error involved. And so these, um, you know, I, I use myself as an example. If, um, if I use my estimated maximum heart rate of 182 beats per minute in, in my calculations instead of my actual maximum heart rate, well, what's going to happen is what I calculate as my VO2 max would end up being lower than what my actual VO2 max would be. All right? so, and that's because there's a, uh, an error involved in estimating maximum heart rate. There's error in assuming that we all have the same equal efficiency with walking, running, uh, cycling, etc. Right? And so by estimating, yes, there is error involved. But all of these tests that we do, we talked about it on Monday, they're all valid. They're all reliable, and they're all objective. And so these are considered to have high degrees of, of validity, right? And high degrees of reliability. Right? If you make up your own test, you lose some of that, right? But we actually will make up some of our own protocols and we'll calculate. So, all right, but we're going to do the Queens College step test, right? I'll also, I will also talk to you about the YMCA step test, but in this class, we're going to do the Queens College step test. And so that's what this is. All right. Now, with the Queens College step test, it, it, all you need, you need a step height. All right. You need a step that is 16 and a quarter inches. All right. So that's approximately what this is. All right. It's not exact. Um, the other benches, I don't see, there's none back here, but like the red benches, the flat benches, and then there's a black one. Those are right at 16 and a quarter inches as well. All right, we don't have any exact step heights, but 16 and a quarter inches is the step height. You need a metronome, right? Now you can download a metronome on your phone, right? And that's what I have. So the one that I use is just called uh, Pulse Metronome, and all it is, it's just a green circle. That's what the little app looks like. It just looks like a green circle, and a metronome just helps you to keep keep a rhythm, all right? So you select whatever rhythm, push start, and it beeps, all right? That's all it does. So that's necessary for this test, all right? You need a stopwatch, right? Something to keep time with, and so that's all you need. That's why these tests that we do are so, they're so easy to do. You don't have to have hardly any equipment. 
right, other than a step and a stopwatch and a metronome, right, which is all easily accessible. So what Amir is going to do here, he's going to step for three minutes. All right. So the stepping time is three minutes. For males and females, the step height, 16 and a quarter inches. All right. And for males, they step at 96 beats per minute, which is 24 steps per minute. All right. So 24, it's a four count. So I'll just demonstrate real quick. So if it's beeping, all right, it's a four count. So it would be up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. Down, down, all right? And so that comes out to 24 steps per minute. For women, it is 88 beats per minute, which is 22 steps per minute, all right? So however many steps per minute you multiply by four to get beats per minute, all right? So men use 96 beats per minute, which is 24 steps. Women use 88 beats per minute, which is 22 steps. And so up, up, down, down. Now, you can switch halfway through if you want to switch lead legs. So you're not always stepping up first with your right leg. You can switch halfway through. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. All right. So we step for three minutes at 96 beats per minute or 88 beats per minute. All right. That's all, that's all they're going to do for three minutes. Keep that rhythm stepping. After three minutes, you are going to immediately sit down. All right, so the subject, they'll just have a seat on the, on the step, all right? You as the tester will find their pulse, and you need to find it within five seconds, all right? And then you're gonna count for 15 seconds, all right? So by, they sit down at three minutes, you immediately find their pulse. It's probably helpful to find their pulse before they sit down. So at about 250 or 255, try and find it, all right? And once it hits three minutes, have them sit down. And then you count for 15 seconds. And then you are going to multiply that by four. And then you put that heart rate into the appropriate equation. All right, so this one's really, it's a really simple test. It's short, three minutes, all right? put their heart rate into the male or female equation, all right? And then record that data. All right, there's a data recording sheet back here, all right? The norms are also right here uh, as well. So that's table 7.1. So that is age-based VO2 norms. Do we have any questions with that so far? So you'll find the pulse, you'll count the number of beats in that 15 second period. So if you got 20 beats in 15 seconds, then the heart rate that you enter into the equation is 80. So whatever you calculate, you multiply it by four. And then that's what you enter into that uh, VO2 max uh, equation, step number eight. All right, any questions? All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna demonstrate. We won't do a full three minutes. We'll just do like a minute or something. Okay. All right. Now I need, I don't know if this app, let me see something real quick. Okay, it continues to beep when you don't close it out, but just at least on an iPhone it does. So I'm gonna get my stopwatch so that I'm ready to go. I'll turn the volume up so you can hear. All right, so we're gonna step for three minutes. All right, we'll probably just do one minute here and then I'll demonstrate finding heart rate, about 15, uh, count for 15 seconds, we'll plug that four, et cetera. All right, you ready? So whenever you're ready, I will start the timer.
15 more seconds. And we're going to find your pulse. Keep stepping. Have a seat. All right, so that's all I got to do. Now, that's kind of annoying to try and count with this thing beeping. And so if you wanted to turn it off right there at the end before you start counting, it might be smart. Because if you're trying to count and all you hear is beep, 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 right, might, be, might affect your, your counting abilities. All right. So that's, that's really simple. All right, do we have any, any questions with that? All right. I have a yes, what's your question? Um, it, not you see it, but what exactly is it affecting? Like, what? I don't know how. Um, but what's the, what's the purpose of the testing? So we're, we're assessing cardiorespiratory fitness. So uh, remember, uh, the aerobic system is the predominant energy pathway in anything really longer than two minutes. And so we're looking at cardiovascular fitness. Um, and, and so it's looking at heart rate response. So a person who has a lower heart rate after stepping for three minutes is probably going to be a little bit more cardiovascularly fit. All right. Um, now the YMCA step test, it's a similar thing, um, but it's a 12 inch step. Males and females step at 96 beats per minute for three minutes. But the difference is with that one, once they sit down, you take the heart rate for an entire minute, all right? With the YMCA step test, all you do is you're not calculating VO2. You simply take what that heart rate was for the minute. And so again, you take it for one full minute and it's looking at recovery heart rate. So after that one minute, whoever has a lower heart rate theoretically is able to recover faster, which theoretically indicates uh, higher fitness levels. And so, but again, with that one, you're not actually calculating a VO2 value. You just have a heart rate and then it, it classifies excellent, superior, average, below average, poor, etc. But that one is still three minutes, 12 inch step height, uh, and you take a full one minute recovery heart rate though. Any other questions with that? All right. So this is considered a single stage submaximal treadmill walking test, right? And has been shown to be valid, reliable. Uh, I think the age age groups that it gives is 20 to like 59 years old. I don't I don't remember exactly, but for most people, it is a valid assessment of cardiorespiratory fitness. So you have um, you have two stages. One is a considered a warm up, and then you have what's considered the first stage, which is the actual exercise trial, all right? So first thing you're gonna do, have the person sit for a few minutes, get their resting heart rate, all right? The second thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have the subject select a walking speed between two and 4.5 miles per hour that elicits a heart rate within 50 to 70% of maximum heart rate, all right? So, most people walk on average at about three miles an hour. Right? For you guys, if most of you guys should be able, I, I would say put the treadmill speed between three and three and a half. If I get to four miles an hour and I'm, I, I'm I almost have to start running. All right now, some people that are taller have longer legs. Four miles an hour is not a problem. But the key is that you want at the end of that warm up, their heart rate should be between fifty and seventy percent of maximum heart rate. So. All you have to do is 220 minus their age all right, will give you their estimated maximum heart rate and then calculate 50 to 70% of that. So if you're 20 years old, 220 minus your age, 220 minus 20 gives you an estimated maximum heart rate of 200 beats per minute. And then 50 to 70% of that would be 100 to 140 beats per minute. 
So at the end of that first warm-up stage, their heart rate should be between 100 and 140 beats per minute. Does that make sense? All right. The exercise stage, the speed of the treadmill stays the same. You don't change the speed of the treadmill. All you do is you go from 0% grade, so it's a go from a flat treadmill to 5% elevation. Right. Now on these treadmills here, they they go 0.5. I think they I think they go up by 0.5. Just make sure you don't go to 0.5. It needs to be 5.0, right? Not 0 0.5. So the speed of the treadmill stays the same the entire test, right? But you increase. Uh, for the, the exercise stage, you increase the elevation to 5%. Right. You walk at that intensity for four minutes, and at the end of four minutes, take their heart rate. Right. So very simple. On these treadmills, all they have to do, you can either you can either manually take it or you can have them grab on to the electrodes. Now they don't need to be holding on the entire time they're walking. The only time they grab on is when they're measuring heart rate at the end of the stage. Right? Or you can put a heart rate strap on them and it'll communicate with the treadmill. You can do it either way. Right? So manually take it, grab onto the electrodes, or have them wear a heart rate monitor. Right? Once you have whatever their heart rate is, you can see the equation there. You'll need the speed of the treadmill. You'll need what their heart rate was. And you'll need their age and their gender, all right? So gender, as on your birth certificate, I shouldn't have to say that, right? As on your birth certificate, um, a zero, all right, is female. So that 5.98 times zero is zero. So that, that's not there. Male is one, 5.98 times one, all right? Very simple. So these are two very simple tests to get you started. All right. They don't take, you know, this one takes three to four minutes. That one takes eight minutes because you have two four minute, you know, the first, first walking warm up stage is four minutes and then the second test stage is four minutes. All right. So they're both very, very quick. Right. Do you guys have any questions? That's it.